So we've done integration by parts. What we're going to look at here is a few exercises to practice this technique. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a few examples. I want you to pause the video, read the examples, have a crack at them, and then come back and check your answers with the work I'm going to present to you. Here you go. So I've got three integrals for you to practice here. What I want you to do, pause the video, have a crack at them. The one big thing I want you to bear in mind is with this last one, it's a definite integral with limits, so just pay attention to that last bit. So, pause it and have a crack. So the first one, I want to find the integral of x plus 2 times ln x dx. Now we've got to pick our u and our v dashed for this one. Now, the original function u, remember we always want to find a function that reduces itself down to a constant and differentiates as quickly as possible to do that. Sometimes, though, it's quite obvious. If we've got the ln x here, and we were to set that equal to the derivative, what we would end up finding is that actually integrating ln x is something that we can't do. So what we have to do is look at that and think to ourselves, right, so what that means is because of the maths behind it, I have to set u equal to ln x, which means that I get u dashed, is equal to 1 over x, and I then have to set v dashed equal to the x plus 2, and when I integrate it, I get v equals x squared over 2 plus 2x. What I then do is I use my standard integral form to be able to do it. So I've got the integral of uv dashed equals uv minus the integral of u dashed v. So what that means is I can then write my integral as the integral of x plus 2 times ln x dx as being equal to, well this first part here, so x squared over 2 plus 2x times my ln x. That's then going to be take away the integral of this x squared over 2 plus 2x times 1 over x. So every term in here is going to be multiplied by 1 over x. So that will then, going to, that will then give me things that I can cancel in terms of powers of x and then be able to integrate easily beyond that. So if I was to do that and multiply these two together, what I'd end up getting is a half x plus 2 dx. So what I now need to do is the next line of working, calculate this, and then I'm laughing. I'm done. So I've got my x squared over 2 plus 2x ln x. It's the first part here, that doesn't change. We then integrate this bit here, and I end up getting minus a quarter x squared plus 2x, and then the important part at the end, plus my c, my constant of integration. So there you go, we've integrated it. As I've said, sometimes there's an obvious choice for u, because we can place some restrictions on a part of the function that we're given. Second one, I want to calculate the integral of 1 minus x, all squared, e to the minus x dx. Now again, this sort of question here, if I was to set my original function u equal to e to the minus x, as I integrated or differentiated that, it would just be cyclic, i.e. it would just keep going and going and going, and I would never ever get rid of it. So what I need to do for this one is then set my u, my original function, equal to 1 minus x squared. If I calculate the derivative of that, u dashed, what that's going to give me is 2 times 1 minus x times the negative 1, because I've got to then do the derivative in here because of the chain rule, so I can just change it to a minus at the start. What I'll then do is set my v dashed equal to e to the minus x, and if I integrate that, I get minus e <coughs> to the minus x. So what I now do is to calculate my integral. So my integral of u v dashed equals u v minus the integral of u dashed v. Calculate all this together and see what I get. I can then say find some integral of 1 minus x all squared e to the minus x dx equals my uv, so my bit at the top, so I get negative bracket 1 minus x squared e to the minus x 
So I'm going to be take away the integral of u dashed v. So this part here times v. Well, I've got two negatives here. So that's going to give it a positive. But it's then going to be minus that. So it's then going to be minus the integral. I've also got a coefficient of 2 here. So I'm going to take that out as a common factor. 2 bracket 1 minus x e to the minus x dx. Now again, this isn't a straightforward one to integrate. So what we're going to do is use integration by parts again, as we showed in the previous video, and integrate that again on its own. So if I was to take this one, this time, if I set u equal to the 1 minus x, my u dashed would be equal to negative 1. So I've eliminated that function completely, so that's the one we want to go for. If I set my v dashed equal to e to the minus x, my v would equal negative e to the minus x, then we plug it all together and I get what I'm after. So I'm going to end up with is u times v, so 1 minus x times e to the minus x, take away u v dashed, so it's then going to be take away the integral, well it's going to be negative here, so it's going to be plus, but then I've got minus e to the minus x, and there dx. Now I'm going to keep the minus with it because then when I integrate this it becomes a positive. So what that then gives me is 1 minus x e to the minus x. I've then got plus but this becomes positive. So plus e to the minus x plus my constant c. So what I'm now going to do is stick it all back together here and see what I get. So I'll end up with the integral of 1 minus x squared e to the minus x dx equals negative bracket 1 minus x all squared e to the minus x. Then I've got minus 2 times this integral. Bear that in mind, we have to take the minus 2 in. So it's then going to be minus 2 times 1 minus x e to the minus x. Then take away 2 e to the minus x and then plus my c, my constant of integration. What we're able to do, if we want, is take a common factor of e to the minus x here. What I'll end up getting for that is I'll get negative bracket 1 minus x squared. Take away 2 bracket 1 minus x minus 2 bracket e to the minus x plus c. And what we're then able to do is sort this bracket here and simplify it. So I've got a nice little expression that I'm going to work with. When I do that, what I end up getting is negative bracket x minus 5, x plus 1, e to the minus x, and then again, plus my c, my constant of integration. So there you go, I've integrated that, but again I've had to apply the integral by parts twice in order to get it to a format that makes it nice and easy for me to work with. The final one I wanted to look at was the one where we had the definite integral here. Now the key to working with the definite integral is that we have to make sure that we apply the limits to each section. So if I was doing the integral from a to b of u v dashed, what I'd end up having to do is the format doesn't change, so I'd still have u v here, but I'd have to apply the limits to this one, and it would then be take away the integral between the limits again of a and b of the second part of my formula, u dashed v. So we'd have to apply the limits in both of these sections here to then work it through and get a solution. But our general steps remain the same. In this one, what I'm going to do is set u equal to x, because I can then get rid of that, calculating one derivative to give me u dashed equal to 1. <clears throat> and if I set v equal to e to the 2x, so v dashed equal to e to the 2x. Integrating it gives me a function v equal to a half e to the 2x. Plug it all in here, and I'm then able to get my solution. So what I know I'm looking for is the integral from 0 to 1 of x e to the 2x dx. That's going to equal first this format here, so uv. So I'm going to end up with x over 2 e to the 2x between 0 and 1. It's then going to be take away the integral of u dashed v, so 1 times this bit here. So we're going to be take away the integral, but I'm going to move the half out.
take away the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the 2x dx. Sort that part there, and I get x over 2, e to the 2x between 0 and 1. Take away the second integral, so take away a half times a half e to the 2x again between 0 and 1. Plug the limits in to find these out. What I'll end up getting for this first one is a half e to the 2 take away 0. Then I'm going to get minus a half times the second one here. So I'm going to get a half e to the 2 take away a half e to the 2 times 0. So a half e to the 0, anything to the power of 0 is 1. So it's then going to be take away a half. If I then take that play about with it and simplify it, what I'll end up getting is 1 quarter e squared minus a quarter. Now depending on the format the question wants, we can write it in one of three ways. I can write it like that, if it doesn't ask for a specific format, leave it. I could also take it the quarter as a common factor, so I could have a quarter bracket e to the power of 2 minus 1, so that could be if it's asking for it in the format of a bracket e to the power of b minus c. It might ask for it in that format. It might ask for a numerical value. If I was to plug it in a calculator, I'd get 1.597. Continuing on, typically to one decimal place, 1.6. So definite integrals aren't any more difficult. We just have to remember to apply the limits at every single stage of the integration so that we can then use it and get a final solution as a numerical value rather than as an expression. Working with integration by parts isn't hugely difficult. It actually allows us to work with more complex functions and integrate them in a much easier manner. We just have to remember those few key rules. Picking the functions at the start to suit our needs and get rid of one of them quickly. If we've got limits, apply them at every single stage. Sometimes remember you may have to apply the integration by parts more than once. You may have to go twice, three times. I've even seen extreme examples of four times. We'll deal with when it comes up with trig functions later on. This is the key part to focus on just now. We have to make sure we remember these key tricks.